Okay, so there are two different business models that you can have when running an online business, retail and wholesale. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Indy. I'm a digital artist known as Do This By Indy on Instagram, TikTok, and on Etsy. So with these two business models, there are different benefits and challenges that come along with either retail or wholesale. So today I'll be talking about the strategies between the both when it comes to profitability, merchandising, and marketing. Okay, so with retail, think of it as a store or an online website or even your Etsy store. That's what we consider retail because you get to handle every aspect of the business when it comes to merchandising, marketing, pricing, etc. Whereas with wholesale, I think of it as a business where you are the creator, you are the middleman that's selling to these retailers. So think about you selling your products to either a boutique, a physical store, or an online store that sells a variety of different other brands, you included. I say that you can be the middleman because you can be asking someone to produce your items, your designs as like a sticker or a pin, and then you sell that item to someone else, whether again, be a boutique or an online store. Okay, so let's jump right into profitability and how we can strategize for both retail and wholesale. So starting off with retail, again, this is where you can control your own store, AKA the pricing. So for me, I like to price a little bit higher in retail just because I don't expect the customer to buy in bulk. There was only one or two times that someone bought half my inventory because they used it as party favors. But again, those are rare occasions and they usually purchase in bulk through a wholesaler, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but for retail, I expect various customers to purchase one item. Um, so for example, with my pins, I like to price it a little bit higher just because it'll cover the cost of me outsourcing to make the pins as well as having to ship individually these pins to various customers. As for wholesale, I expect bulk orders from these customers. Um, typically for wholesale, unless they're a smaller business, um, they tend to buy in bulk. So buying it in bulk means that they don't expect the pricing to be at retail price. Um, they expect a discount of some sort for buying out your inventory. Okay, so just giving an example of maybe a imaginary item and its cost in retail and how much it's sold. So just an example, maybe a pin of mine, um, and these are not the exact cost in retail of it, but if it were to be cost at $2 and for retail, I sell it at $9.50 and again, the average customer in my retail store only buys one. So the total that they would spend is $9.50 at what I would be selling at. And so the profit would be $7.50 minus any shipping costs and other additional costs. Um, and that's just coming from the 950 minus the cost of $2. So that's the retail profitability. Okay, so for wholesale, we have the same cost, which is $2 per pin, um, but we're gonna be selling it at $5, which is $4.50 under retail. Um, and we have a bulk order of 10 units. So the cost would be $50 for the 10 units of pins sold at $5 with a profitability of $30. So there's definitely pros and cons to having wholesale versus retail. But again, with wholesale, as you can see with the numbers, you still get a positive profitability by moving the inventory a little faster at a discount of the retail price. So I think it's really up to you in terms of your goals, whether you want to hold that inventory and potentially have a longer period of holding that inventory, whereas with bulk orders, you one, get a smaller profitability, but you move inventory at a faster rate. So if you look at here, if we were to sell the 10 units at a retail price, which is $9.50, we'll get $95 in retail versus $50 in wholesale, and you get a profitability of $75 versus $30. So again, up to you if you value profitability or you value moving inventory fast. So for me, I have both businesses, retail and wholesale. 
Um, definitely get more profitability through retail, but when it comes to my wholesale orders, I have a bigger business with my sticker items because I could easily print that at home. And if I were to work with an outsourced sticker company like Sticker App or Sticker Mule, I usually wait until there is a discount so that I can purchase it at a discounted rate and then I can sell it at the same price that I usually do while profiting the dollars. So when it comes to my other outsourced items like my pins or my keychains, I tend to buy a super large order with them just so that I can get a discounted rate. So, so technically they're my wholesaler because I'm buying a bulk from them and then I sell it at a um, discounted rate to my wholesalers. Okay, so next up is merchandising. So with retail, you get to control how you want your store to look like, whether it's physical or online. So again, me personally, I have my Etsy shop, so I can control how I want the page to look like. So, so I get to control how I want the page to look like, what items I want at the top, which ones I want at the bottom, um, if there are any items that I want to push. Um, so for example, during the holiday time period, I obviously want to push my Christmas sheets rather than, you know, my lemon notepad, which is meant for the summer. Whereas for wholesale, you can't necessarily control that aspect because it's really up to the retailer of how they want to merchandise their store, whether again, physically or online. So if you wanted to push that Christmas sheet during the holidays, you can maybe email them asking if they can do it. but. Obviously, they would probably have more than just your item for the holiday, so they can't always prioritize your items. They like to put the items up at the front of the store or at the top of the page where they see fit. However, nowadays, I feel like there are ways to kind of pay your way to the top of the page. Um, I know for bigger stores like a Walmart or Target, if you were going to be like a marketplace seller there, you could always purchase sponsored ads to get to the top of the page. A little bit different with smaller businesses who don't necessarily have, you know, capabilities of having sponsored ad or featured items on their page because they do it manually but again like I said you can always email them how your products are doing whether you can push it for a day or a week or however like long you want it to be at the top of the page. Okay so up next is marketing which is very similar to merchandising but for retail you handle every aspect of marketing. You handle the social media portion, you handle the paid advertisements, anything to get the customer to your store. You are the one in charge of all the marketing. Whereas for wholesale, your only job is to get the product into the store of the retailer. They handle how to sell the product and how to get people to their store. So working with a wholesaler and wanting to be part of the marketing portion is just non-existent. It's really out of your control. They're the ones in charge of that and you can only hope that this retailer is very popular, they have a loyal following and customer base so that they can sell through your products uh, very quickly and they can reorder from you also very quickly. So that is it for this video. I hope you learned a little bit about retail versus wholesale and what type of business that you want to be running for your own business. But until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this.